Hello, this is Dr. Jeff Tarrant, director of the Neuro Meditation Institute. And I wanted to take this opportunity to explain a little bit about what we mean by neuro meditation. Uh, this question comes up a lot, people asking, well, what's the difference between neuro meditation and meditation? And so I wanted to kind of break that down for everyone so that you could kind of understand our perspective and where we're coming from. And so the first place that I want to start with is defining meditation. So it's one of those words that we sort of know what it is. We think we know what it is, but it's, it's hard to define. So the definition that we are using in, in the neuro meditation program is that meditation is a systematic mental training designed to challenge habits of attending, thinking, feeling, and perceiving. And so there's a couple of important elements about this definition. The first is that we're really talking about meditation as a mental training. Now, obviously, you can use meditation for a lot of other purposes, including spiritual development. Uh, and certainly, that's an important element. And for me, in my personal practice, that's the way that I use it most mornings. Uh, and at the same time, wanting to emphasize that the skills involved in meditation apply to everybody. It really is mental training. It's about learning how to pay attention in a particular way. And in this particular way, it is challenging the habitual ways that you pay attention. So we tend to have certain processes that the mind and the brain do automatically. We don't think about them. We don't analyze them. They just happen the way they happen. And a lot of times those are the exact same processes that cause us distress. So the way we see things, the way we think about things, the way we feel about things, that's what causes us a lot of distress. And what meditation is really about is about learning how to change those automatic mental processes. So this is important in terms of a background of our perspective, where we're coming from. So the idea of neuromeditation is really taking a lot of the ancient concepts, taking a lot of the wisdom that has been brought down through the ages from all different kinds of traditions, uh, but particularly Buddhism. They've offered us a lot in terms of particular meditation style practices. And what we've wanted to do is to take that wisdom and while respecting it and respecting the traditions, also bring it into the 21st century. Because a lot of the ways that meditation and mindfulness are approached, have been approached, are from a traditional model. And that's fantastic. That's wonderful if that resonates for you. But if it doesn't, how can we provide these kinds of skills, this kind of approach for a wider audience? So when we talk about meditation for the 21st century, there's a couple of things that are important for us to kind of acknowledge or talk about. The first is that there are a lot of reasons that people don't meditate. For the most part, pretty much everybody accepts at this point that meditation is good for you, that engaging in a meditation practice has a lot of positive benefits. And at the same time, a lot of people don't meditate. Why is that? So we hear certain things over and over from people. So concerns about that they don't know if they're doing it right. Uh, they can't get their mind to be quiet. Uh, concerns that it's con that it's you know connected to either Buddhism or Hinduism or some other spiritual or religious practice that doesn't resonate for them, so they don't feel like it fits, like they don't meditation doesn't fit into their world. Um, people complain that they don't have time, they don't know where to start, uh, or this comes up actually quite r regularly is that people have tried meditation and feel like somehow they have failed or they became very anxious during the practice and so aren't interested in exploring it further. So what we have done in this program, in the Neuro Meditation program, is try to provide solutions for all of these things. So we have very specific tools uh, to offer people so that it's not this kind of vague practice where you get uh, uh, you know, kind of a, a set of instructions that you're not really sure what you're supposed to do. Um, so we wanted to make it very clear, very practical and pragmatic. We want the process to be efficient for people. We want it to be secular, so it applies to everyone, regardless of what you believe or think. 
We try to create structures so that people can get feedback on their internal state. Very important in terms of learning quickly. We want our perspective to be trauma-informed and developmental, recognizing that the same approach is not going to work for everybody, and that particularly if people have had difficult life experiences or had traumatic experiences, some of these practices can be very difficult and very challenging, bringing up a lot of uncomfortable thoughts and feelings and body sensations. And there are ways to work with that, but you have to acknowledge it. So we've defined meditation and we've talked a little bit about uh, our approach, some of the things that we're trying to build into this in order to teach meditation. But we want to get really specific. We don't want it to be this vague thing. And so what we have done is, is looked at all of the research. This is where the neuro comes in. We've looked at all of the research looking at brainwave patterns and meditation styles. And what we've learned is that basically most meditations can be divided into four categories. And those categories are structured based on how you're using your attention, what is your intention, which brain waves are activated or quieted down, and in what brain regions. So by looking at those four things, we can essentially identify four different styles of meditation. And what we learn from this is that not all meditations are the same. So we can't talk about meditation as sort of this generic thing because different practices have a different impact on the brain. This is important to understand, and this is really the core of neuromeditation, understanding how these practices affect the brain so that we can make very clear choices about what practices we want to engage in for our brain and for our health and well-being. So quickly, the four styles that we talk about and teach are focus. It's exactly what it sounds like. Holding your attention on a single object like the breath or a mantra. When the mind wanders, gently bringing it back. Mindfulness, which has been used a lot in our culture recently, that term. But we're defining it very specifically to mean a set of practices where you are observing what's happening in the moment without attachment. You're not grasping for something. You're not pushing anything away. You're accepting and allowing what's there and letting it go. Open heart practices. This is, includes things like loving kindness and compassion, but also practices like gratitude or you know forgiveness. All of these practices involve activating some sort of positive emotional state and then doing something with that, sending that loving energy to yourself, sending it to others, sending it to parts of the world that, that, need, that need love and compassion. And then quiet mind is the fourth style. This is the stereotype of meditation. It's what people think meditation is. Sort of, there's nothing happening internally. Your, your inner voice is somehow silenced and you're not thinking. So this does happen in certain practices, but as you can see, it's only one of four of the styles that we deal with. So in short, neuromeditation is the application of brain-based principles to the practice of meditation. That's what neuromeditation is. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. There's a lot of ways to apply these brain-based principles to meditation. And that's what our program is really trying to offer. First is trying to offer a way to understand these different styles and how you can make a active choice about which one applies to you based on your goals and your needs. And then also giving you a lot of tools to do that and a lot of options. It's not a one size fits all program. So for example, that first part that I talked about, being able to identify which style might be the best choice for you. What we've done in our program is looked at, how, like I said, how these styles affect your brain. And because they affect your brain differently, we can actually start to look and pair them up with different concerns that also affect the brain. So without getting into a lot of detail here, because we cover it in much more depth uh, in our courses, but the basic idea that, for instance, a focus meditation is ideal for concerns like ADHD 
or people who are experiencing cognitive decline as they get older, or uh, memory issues, and even things like active depression uh, or anxiety. And the reason that focus can be helpful with these things is because you are, A, you're learning to sustain your attention on one thing. You're training the brain to hold your focus. When you do that, it activates the frontal lobes. And the frontal lobes are involved in cognitive processing. They're involved in things like memory and analyzing and sustaining attention. So literally, these practices are counterbalancing some of the problems that we experience. So we can help identify which needs or concerns you're experiencing and then point you in the direction of a practice that is going to most efficiently get you to your goals. So when you're trying to figure out which style might work best, uh, you might consider taking the survey that we have online. It's a free uh, digital survey and it's about 44 questions. You complete it online and then it will give you a score for each of the four styles. The higher your score for each one suggests that might be something that you would benefit from practicing. It will also start to point you in the direction of certain practices that might be helpful as a starting point. So you might check that out, www.neuromeditationinstitute.com backslash NMSI, which stands for Neuromeditation Styles Inventory. Now, I mentioned that we have a lot of different approaches to helping people learn about these styles and also how to engage with them. So we offer classes at our institute in Eugene, Oregon, our trainers and our instructors who have gone through our practice offer classes wherever they might be. You can look on our website to find if there are any certified neuro meditation instructors or trainers near you. We offer national and international workshops. These are usually three day workshops to really dive in and learn a lot about this. These can be for just anybody. Uh, they can also be for professionals, mental health professionals who are wanting to learn this to work with their clients. We provide coaching and mentoring with people one-on-one. -on -one. This can be done live or it can be done through a platform like Skype or GoToMeeting or Zoom. We develop curriculums for other programs. So for schools, uh, for the military, we develop ways to use this content for specific populations. We have programs already in place that involve yoga and qigong. So you can see there's a lot of elements just in terms of how we can teach you, how we can offer some of these things. A lot of this is going to be available online uh, as a distance course that you can take. And then we also use a lot of technology. You don't have to use technology for these practices, but we have those as options and we teach people how to do this. So you can use uh, neurofeedback, we call it EEG, neuro meditation, where you're measuring your brainwave activity during meditation styles, and then getting information back about when the brain is in the right meditative state. We work with virtual reality to assist in getting people into an open-eyed meditative state. This can also be combined with certain styles, uh, certain types of EEG biofeedback. We use audio visual entrainment, heart rate variability, vibroacoustics. So you can see there's a lot of different tools and mechanisms for working with this. So we just wanted to give you kind of an overview of what we're about, how our program works. And we encourage you, if you have any questions or you would like more information, check out our website or uh, shoot me an email. The information will be provided at the bottom of this video. All right. Thank you so much.